Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Let's Play Spark the Electric Jester 3. Hope you had a Merry Christmas and uh, are still having a happy enough time. He says as if he hasn't been recording all of these videos two weeks in advance. Anyway, when we last left off, I did the Airstrip Madness and Aviator Highway levels of Stratoria Interstellar. And off screen, because I'm a doof, I ended up doing Mayday Midday. I didn't mean to. I also ended up getting both of the speed medals for that. Anyway, let's just do that over again, because, you know, I want to show off every single level, and I didn't mean to do that. It's just that I was kind of in a bad mood, and things didn't turn out the way they were supposed to. Anyway, it seems like the plane that we got on at the end of the one level is... No! I keep doing that. Yeah! It's going down! It's taking on a lot of damage! Whoa! Okay. And we gotta get out. Somehow. In a time limit, of course. Of oh, God's sakes. And yet again, I have to continuously ask the question while throughout playing this whole thing. Where are the passenger seats? Now, admittedly, this may not be a passenger aircraft. It may just be for cargo transport. But, <laughs> even then, the layout of this place seems highly irregular for a cargo transport. I mean, sure, there's a lot of cargo containers in here, but this place, there's a lot of long hallways that act like, you know, tubes, tubes. Why the tubes and the ramps that go up into the sky like it's some sort of wasteway and all these higgly piggly placed laser barriers. Anyway, that was the level. <clears throat> okay. Now with that level done and out of the way, let's get to the level that I was continuously fussed about during the last... You see, the reason that I did that level is because I actually tried to do another session that I cancelled because things went drastically wrong off-screen. And it had to do with this level being on a timer, among various other things. I didn't mean to do that. Oh boy, we're already on a good start here, and I'm really loving it. But I'm trying not to get flustered like I was last time, which is what led to me deciding to forego keeping the previous session. And just keep going. Just, just go. Just go. Go faster, faster. Ooh, no! Not that this Bad, 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 bad. Oh, we're back here again. And we've fallen off completely. Keep your head in the game. Keep your head in the game. You can still do this. You can still beat the time. Yeah. 
Head in the game! <laughs> oh, this level is doing absolutely everything it can. To Get under my skin! There, that's better. We skipped a whole section back there. That works. That's fine by me. You see, that's the direction you're supposed to send me, you stupid piece of junk. to the sky. No, no, no! Uh, 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 please, 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 no! <laughs> to the death! Now do you understand why I was losing my mind with this level? We're gonna have to cut! <laughs> Holy mother of goo! I was right there too! Son of a tragic, zip-packing, stupid, fricker, ding-dagging, poop stick! Anyway, that was that level. Let's play Spark the Electro Chester 3. We can move on! <sighs> Such a simple level. Why was I losing my mind over it? Oh! Suborbital Scramble. Another great one. Alright. This one's fun because it takes us... Well... Not quite, but suborbital kind of implies that we're going to space! We're in space, boys! You know, space! And we have an air bubble. Doesn't that seem a little bit odd? I, I didn't think Spark needed air. Oh boy, anti-gravity. Just float wherever the heck we want. Oh, yes! But like I said before, we're in space. And what you saw before, yeah, this spark needs air. I didn't think he needed air, considering that we've been able to go underwater indefinitely, unless there's something else in the atmosphere below here that he needs to breathe that isn't oxygen. It just begs the question of what does he breathe, then? Ah, oh, so, so deed oxygen. Well, neither do I. Well, what do you breathe? I have no idea. I mean, what do you breathe? You know, that, 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 that's a question 
you know, for Brevin and his forces, <laughs> Freedom Planet is just like, we don't need oxygen. Okay, what do you need? You don't need oxygen. You, 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 you gotta live, you gotta have something that you inhale in order to, well, I mean, most of his forces were robot slime ball thing. Wait, why am I even talking about this? This is Spark the Electric Gesture, the not a, a not Sonic game that's not Freedom Planet. I gotta get back to doing that later at some point. And then get to the sequel when I have the money to actually buy it. Because I spent all the money I had possible to get this instead of that. Oh boy, these vertical sections, I... These just make things so much lovelier, don't they? Were there upside down... There are... These are street lamps, right? Why would you have street lamps on a space construction? A space construct? I, I, I need... Nope, but there we go. Are you trying to build a highway in the skyway? Thought you already did that. Oh, come on. This is going well. I love vertical levels with cameras like these. Come on. Ugh. Yeah, there, finally. I'm going somewhere. Yeesh. Uh, we're going down again, I guess. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. Times like this, I wish I could do that wicked speed run tech that I saw before when I was doing some of my uh, talk videos for this game. It was just like, oh, you can just shoot yourself straight up into the infinitum. Oh, no, 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 please, please. I want to not fall down. I want to go up. I want to go up! <sighs> I'm gonna need an air bubble before too long. Yeah, I knew it. Ding, dang, dumb piece of silly biological hoo ha. Air, who needs air? I don't need air! I'm an electric jester! I'm. What am I? <laughs> Apparently I'm an ant! Uh, if... You know, some of the stuff that I looked up on the Spark Wiki is to go by. Or at least it was modeled after an ant. Because formies have antennas. The term formie comes from the Portuguese word for ant. Formiga. Holy crud!
cut out the entirety of what I just said. That's all I'm going to say. You won't get any context. It, I, I just said things I do not understand. And uh, I don't want that on the record. All I want on the record is that that level was completed. And we can now move on from all this stuff into Mecha Madness. Okay. I'm sure this can only mean one thing. Lots of robots. Oh. Wait. Big robot. Very big robot. Wait. Another big robot? Wait a minute. You look familiar somehow. Oh, we're piloting it. It has cup holders. And we're up against this guy again. Oh, I see. Okay. Gundam fight! Ready? Go! Oh, boy, yeah. I'm gonna punch the scrap out of you. And you're, you're not really... Hitting bell. Okay, I was about to check the database. You'd go and do that. I don't know how to pilot this thing. Low creeper. Upgrades. Electric. Combat. Yeah, it doesn't seem to say much about... Wait a minute. Oh, I noticed that up in the corner. <laughs> Every time I move something, Spark is doing something. <laughs> I'm gonna make myself dizzy. Ow! Okay. Yeah, most of the buttons aren't really doing anything. Other than the dash button. Can I charge anything? Can I do a charge attack? Can I do anything other than basic punches and kicks? And dash maneuver, which apparently is also a dodge slash parry maneuver. I mean, I'm doing okay thus far. I'm not... Ooh, 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 okay. I mean, this is fun. It's not the most engaging thing ever, though, because of how restricted the design is. Yay, we smashed a giant robot! <laughs> Scene. Are you going to pull a Master Asia on us and destroy our mecha without your mecha? That's what I thought. Mm. 
Man. Uh. <gasps> Stop it! Flint, can't you see? It's me, Vlote. They've been lying to you. I survived. No more of this Fark Forest stuff. Let's go back to being friends. Of course, it had to be you of all things. Your body may be different, but your voice, it's the same. Why do you have to feel so real? Jester! Enough! Do you even know why? Why you are doing any of this? Back off! This isn't your fight. And you're only making things worse. I was strictly instructed not to eliminate you. But as it currently stands, I am left with no choice. The next time we meet, I will not show any mercy. You have been warned. So that's what this is about, huh? Long lost friend indoctrinated into the Force? Yeah. Right, I get ya. Don't worry, we'll put a stop to this. You can count on that. Thank you. After his long fight with Double, Flint continued on his own, aimlessly. While passing through a junkyard, he noticed a house, and somehow that house piqued his interest. What was inside shocked him. In there lay the body of a local waste collector, and in the corner, crying, there was a very strange looking person. Carefully, Flint approached it. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, said the crying person. I didn't mean to. My power, it went out on its own. The person he saw was some kind of robot, but it looked nothing like any other robot he had ever seen. This thing could be dangerous, he thought. But then he remembered what he'd been through in the past, and decided to help. Here, take my hand. Let's get out of here. Together they went to a secluded spot, where they spoke to each other. She had no memories of who she was, or why she looked the way she did. While staring at her reflection in a puddle, she began to cry. Please, wait here, said Flint, as he rushed over to a nearby city. From a local donation box, he procured a set of... The narrator decided he was done with this one, and decided to go home, gargle some water, and try that again. From a local donation box, he procured a set of clothes. The girl was pleasantly surprised. A couple hours later, the girl finally chose the perfect outfit. Flint also gave the girl a name. She would be named Float. Due to the marking beneath her eyes, she did not mind the name. From that day on, both roamed the world together as Flint showed her how to engage in society. They ran into trouble from time to time but never really caused any trouble themselves. Both remained this way for a while, until the day would come where Flint picked up a signal sent directly to him. He remained disconnected from the general internet, but was open to communication requests. <clears throat> Excuse me. Initially the message was a cry for help, but later diverged into pure noise. Quickly, Flint cut the message short and deleted traces of it from his memory. That noise 
It wasn't just toys, it was a malicious program. Immediately he looked at Float, but she was surprisingly fine. Shortly after, a familiar face made himself present. Hey, long time no see, huh? Ding dang it! Why do you have to put that line everywhere? This isn't even a Sonic game! Looks like you made a friend. And, let me guess, you got the signal too. Flint assumed Double heard the whole message, was now fully infected. Whatever that program was, it was now fully in control. Most robots, when receiving a message, the message is fully copied into their system, stored, and then read later. Flint continued... <clears throat> Flint concluded that if the message was played in full, only then the program would take full control. And since he deleted it from his memory, he miraculously dodged a bullet. Float was never connected in the first place, so she was not affected. Still, there was always a chance that Double wasn't infected at all, considering his previous experiences with him. Or if the program would even have any effects on him. What do you want? said Flint. It's a very special mission from someone very powerful, Double shouted. Calls himself Freem. You should see his specs. He's unmatched in every aspect. Truly the most advanced killing machine. And, hmm, something something Robot Utopia. And all we have to do is get rid of one pesky robot. Then, the client is promising a better role in his so-called new world if we succeed. And what if we fail? asked Flint. Think he'll kill us or something like that, said Double. Flint knew this was not good news, and he also knew he could not beat Double in a one-on-one. -on -one. With that, Flint came up with a plan. He would follow Double in his mission and pretend Double was still his master, just like before. Because of that, he would, regretfully, lie to Float about his past, claiming he worked for the liberation of robot kind from their abusers. Together the three trained, and it was only then that Flint realized the magnitude of Float's powers. The training had taken a surprisingly long time, as Float had no prior combat experience. But regardless, the day would come where they would set off on their journey. A journey where Flint would lose his only friend. Well, that's a deep, dark path worth not going down this very moment on account of... The next level being a challenge that we'll have to get into in the next episode of... Let's play Spark the Electric Jester 3! Boy, for as happy-go-lucky as this game has been up to this point, you know, all things considered, it's going pretty downhill, especially right after Christmas break. Anyway, with that all said and done, we'll catch up next time, and thank you for watching. As always, there will be links in the description below to my various social media outlets as well as to my coffee page if you care to follow up on that. The boss of mentality saying peace out.